And I'm like, what happens when you actually take traditional business knowledge and then apply it to Instagram? You know, yeah. that yeah. was my experience. I like market research, modeling success, yeah. all the simple little things. Yeah. Um, that are, we are live with Josue Pena and he is an Instagram marketing expert. Uh, he's going to be starting his, uh, starting a growth hack, his already started YouTube channel this year. So I would expect to see a lot more of him from on, uh, on YouTube. So yeah, it was wet. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate, appreciate you being here. Yeah, no problem, dude. Like, thank you for taking the time. It's really an honor to be here. So I appreciate it. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so how I want to start this off is to just want to be a quick interview, uh, go kind of sequentially. So how did you get into Instagram marketing? I know that's kind of your claim to fame at this point in your career. How did you get into Instagram marketing? And then what were some of the mentors, resources, uh, ways that you got to the level of success you're at now? Yeah. So yeah, my, my, I would say like the reason why I started is usually like a little bit different than most people. Most people usually have a crappy nine to five and like they want to build their online business or whatever the heck. Um, me, I was, I come from a Potewa country. So Dominican Republic, that's where I was born. Yeah. That's where I grew. Um, 25 right now. I lived there until I was 22. So I lived to have only been living in the United States for three years by now. Um, and the reason why I started in social media and all this stuff was because I wanted to become a professional soccer player. That was my dream since I was like 14, 15, nice. whatever. Yeah. Um, and I was like, my, my brain, like the thought was, if I don't put myself out there, nobody's going to come looking for me. Like, I, you know, it's, it's DR. DR yeah. is mainly known for baseball, not soccer. Yeah. So I'm like, nobody's going to find me here. <clears throat> so I just like decided to go out there and start, you know, putting myself out there. Um, and that was around four or five years ago by now that I started. And uh, that's how I, you know, how I came about. And from there, you know, four or five years in the making, like freaking broke, nothing was working. Um, and then in... Uh, 2016, February 2016, um, I took a loan for 2,000 bucks and I bought a course uh, from Nathan Chan. He's actually one of my good friends. Um, and I took it and started seeing results uh, on Instagram very quickly. I was using uh, what's, what's called the follow and follow method um, back then and it was working, right? Yeah. Um, I was growing semi, semi good. But then in May of 2016, the algorithm changed in the app called Crowdfire. Many, maybe people here watching know what that yeah. is. Crowdfire was taken down by Instagram and the follow on follow thing was done. Yeah. Um, and by that point, I'm like, crap, I'm $2,000 down. Yeah. Um, I need to figure crap out. You yeah. Know? I, I, there's no other way around this crap. So um, then that, and that moment was, okay, I took a $2,000 loan. Uh, I'm broke. Still, I have a, a decent audience, more or less. Yeah. Um, but I need to figure crap out on Instagram because, like, I'm, I, like, I'm down. So what I did was I was going through in that time I was going through my master's degree, and I already have an engineering degree as well. Okay. And so what were you doing a master's in? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Okay. Yep. Like business, business, yep. cool. an MBA. Um, and basically, I was also hearing Russell Brunson. Uh, Mitchell Harper, and I'm like, the what happened when you actually take uh, one of the biggest business numbers, 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 numbers uh, and then apply and it I was hearing all these you know, people, yeah. that was my whole business, like Mark Research, Modeling Success, yeah. all the simple little things. Yeah. Um, that aren't that sexy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That aren't yeah, that yeah. Sexy. It's, not, it's not like, hey, just post a picture of the booty. And yeah, like, yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah. the, I don't know, like reverse engineering how the stupid algorithm works. Yeah. Um, and I did that, and then it freaking blew up. Like, it's just, it was insane. Like, very quickly, uh, everything took off. And then can, can you give an example real quick? I, I, I hate to interrupt the story, but like, because I mean, there's a lot of things in there we could get detailed about, but you said, you said you did some of these business, business basics, like market research and it took off. Could you give an example of just like two or three of those, those basic things? Like were you, yeah, sure were you modeling like where mm -hmm. users were coming from in an Excel sheet? Like what was it you actually were doing? Yeah. Sure thing. So basically, and now like I've broken down like the process in a systematic way, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was trying to error, but it's like, it comes down to four simple things, content, consistency, market research, and networking. Those are the four pillars of Instagram. And that is it. So content, it will always be king creating with purpose. So for example, if you have a car page, yeah. don't post your cat. Nobody cares about your cat. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you're posting, if you're an entrepreneur, nobody cares about your stupid lifestyle. Like unless you're giving value on like, you know, how to live the life or whatever, or well, unless you're Ty Lopez and you have freaking garages, <laughs> and and girls in bikinis, yeah. you know, like then, then that might not be the best approach to you. So like creating with purpose and giving value to your audience is the number one thing. 
So content is the most important one. The second one is consistency. Every single day you got to show up on Instagram. Just like you do at your job or whatever. If you want to grow it, you got to take care of it like a plant. You know, like a plant, you got you to gotta water it, you got to grow it. And then eventually it's big enough that it sustains itself. Yeah. But at the beginning, especially like you got to grow, you got to nurture it and you got to be on top of it. So consistency is, I will say like one of the things that people can do that will literally take them from like, they will see results overnight. It's a simple math, right? They, you're posting one time a day and you're getting 5,000 impressions. If you start posting four times a day, you're going to get 20, yeah. you know, 20,000. So it's, it's, and then it, that compounds as well. So it's, it's simple math. That's the second one, consistency. Third one is market research. And this is one that, the one that took me like from zero to hero very quickly. And it was understanding who your influencers are, who your competitors are. And the difference between two influencers are like the big, big dogs and players. Competitors are, you know, smaller people. Um, and just modeling what the influencers are doing. So bio, what does their bio look like? The Instagram stories, are they doing Instagram live? What the captions look like? The content itself. So what content work in that specific niche? So the content that goes viral or what I call BPPs or best performing posts. Yeah. Um, that content that's above average engagement. So if they're getting a thousand likes per, per post, the, the content that gets 5,000. That content you want to model it whether it's repurposing it and giving credit to original creator or creating it yourself. Yeah. So that content is prone to go viral. It's already proven. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to do all this crazy. You just have to model success and that is it. So um, once you do that, then the, the fourth pillar, um, and this is like kind of like the gasoline on the fire, is then the same people who you just research, the influencers, you are going to reach out to them and provide value. So it can be either monetary value. It can be either creating amazing content. It can be anything. Yeah. Right. And then what you do is try to get them to engage on your content itself. Yeah. And then you basically just, you, you hack the algorithm, you gamify it. Yeah. Um, and you just basically just blow up really quickly. That's the whole process in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So purpose, the, the, the posts have to have a purpose that's relevant to your channel, whatever your marketing consistency, you have to figure out what the influencers are doing market research, like know who your competition is, who the big dogs are, model what they're doing and then yeah. find a way to get them engaged. So the first part I want to go back to is the best performing posts. Could you just yeah. give an example of like right now, it's uh, I think it's like March 27th, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give an example of like what's a BPP for any any type of channel or industry or, or yeah. for Instagram, any industry? Yeah, sure thing. So for example, um, in fitness, uh, there's right now a video, let's say fitness and, and weight, because like there's different niches. Like in fitness, there's body weight, there is weight loss, there is uh, CrossFit, there is calisthenics, there is, you know, all these yeah, all these sub niches. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like first, obviously people need to focus, like they need to focus on one. Um, but let's say for example, you are in the bodybuilding niche. Uh, there's one right now that's like, uh, squatting 300 pounds on a Segway. If you can squat 300 pounds on a Segway, then why wouldn't you, you know, like, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. freaking, you know, like there's a lot of strong people like that. Like yeah, yeah. I know a lot of strong guys. Like why, why don't you have like 200 million to, like followers? Yeah. You know, like yeah. they're like, I don't know. Like you're freaking strong. Just freaking squat. Like yeah, yeah. squat a lot. That's it. Uh, yeah. People love that. Yeah. Um, if you were, for example, in, in the weight loss space, like same thing, like transformation pictures transformation. or, or, um, infographics work extremely well. So here's a pro tip, go on Pinterest, type in your niche and then put infographics. You will see a ton of them, like a ridiculous amount of them. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, um, infographics grow super viral and like they work tremendously. Um, let's say for example, now in the beauty space, freaking makeup tutorials, like not, not makeup tutorials, but like time lapses of girls, like putting their makeup on. And yeah. then the thumbnail of the video itself is like the before and after it yeah. works super well. Yeah. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Travel pictures, travel, uh, amazing travel places, like, like anything really. Uh, yeah. Let's see cars, a freaking Lamborghini spitting fire out of his exhaust. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't like this. this I'm just impressed like, that you have this many off the top of your head for this many. Yeah. Years. <laughs> I mean, like, at, at first's face, freaking uh, motivational videos or quotes, like pumping people up or just giving specific value, how to make money online. Yeah. Um, you know, like, there's endless stuff, really, like, endless. So, no, that, that was value, awesome. Yeah, value, I just want to give people an idea of what you mean with that, yeah, the BPP. Yeah. yeah, of course. Like, at the end of the day, like, value, people are going to value uh, follow you because of the value that you're providing. And value is, is like, for example, for some people might be, um, hey, it's entrepreneurship, it's tips, it's information. Some people value entertainment. Mm -hmm. Some people value is, um, you know, amazing content that you're like, wow. So value, they, you need to determine what value is to your audience and just provide it to them. That's it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, so the, the second part of that, that I, I didn't fully understand was the, 
So reaching out to influencers, you said, if there's something you can do for them to provide value for them and then potentially, you know, hope for some sort of interaction on your content, what would that look like in, in practice? Yeah. So thanks. So for example, let's say, um, there's a theme page, right? Or, or a per, like there's hundreds of theme pages. Um, there's general brand pages that just repost content. So, um, if you are a personal brand influencer or another theme page, what you can do for them is, Hey, like if you create amazing content, they're probably going to repost you and just promote you for free because they need content. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's a win-win for both. Um, let's say for example, if you're reaching out to a, a personal brand influencer, what you can do then in that case is find a way to provide value, so find a way to collaborate, so, figure out a way, figure out something that they need help with. Yeah. More than likely, um, if people are entrepreneurs, you're watching, you do marketing, you know, stuff like that. I can tell you right now, influencers are freaking broke. Like it's, it's stupid, but there are. So if you can tell them, Hey, look, I'm going to help you make a 1400 bucks tonight. I just do this thing. Like just tell them free tips. They'll be more than happy to like, listen to you. Uh, if you know your stuff. Like you gotta, you gotta know your stuff first. Let's say that's for worst case scenario. You are a freaking zero and you have nothing to provide a value. You always have your wallet. You can always pull it out and just pay them. So like there's, yeah, you know, like that's just always true. works. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the, there's always that option. Yeah. Uh, just pay them for promotions. Uh, pay them to like and comment on your stuff. Pay them, like that kind of stuff will work 100%. Like will literally blow you up. And like people think, oh, I got to spend a lot of money, like $10,000, $20,000. No, it's, it's, you can spend that amount of money and like grow really, really big, but you can spend a few hundred bucks a month, every single month, and you will see dramatic results. Like I have students right now, um, is Alex Wilkie, like for example, he has, I think right now, 470,000 followers in seven months. And he spends about 300 bucks a month or 200 bucks a month, if that, even when he started. Wow. Uh, yeah. And he spends like, and people, and people think like, oh yeah, I got to spend like five hours a day on Instagram. He spends about 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. That's, that's, that's so impressive. <laughs> so, so oh, like, um, yeah, it's all about systemizing and like figuring out what works in your niche. Once you understand that providing value to the influencers, collaborating, and then just blowing it up. He's, he has the biggest, the fastest, um, beauty brand on Instagram right now, I think. So like even he's working, I think like freaking fortune 500 companies are bringing him on their meetings or corporate meetings or something. I don't uh, even know. The, this, this is one of your students. You said, you said, what was yeah. his name? Alex Wilkie. Yeah. Alex Wilkie. He's one of my students. <sighs> nice. Wow. That's yeah. I have so many questions. Okay. So let me start here. So I want to take it back a little bit to the start. So you said you, you got a course. Uh, it sounds like the strategy you learned in that course is no longer, uh, relevant on Instagram. Is that the case? Does that, does that creator still make courses? What courses would you recommend now if someone's trying to get in to Instagram? Yeah. So, so um, I actually know Nathan, uh, and I actually met him a few weeks ago in uh, Funnel Hacking Live. Um, okay. So, um, in Orlando. Um, but right now, for example, uh, I took the course in 2016 and at the beginning I had amazing results, but then they become outdated because of the algorithm change. Yep. And then basically I, you know, I, I felt like, okay, this thing no longer works. So I had to pivot and figure things out on my own. Um, I don't know if he has that course right now, if he sells that course. I know he sells other courses, like he has e-commerce, um, or whatever, but I don't know that one in particular. I do know that like previously I, you know, I owe him for actually like getting me started, yeah. you know, like, like getting me started. But, uh, later on I had to figure things out on my own. Yeah. That's usually how it happens. But right now, for example, I know courses, um, I would definitely follow Russell Brunson. I would yep. say that he's one like, um, a lot of the things I do on Instagram like in terms of monetization have come from ideas from Russell Brunson. Yeah. Um, the best way I would say that like you can make a lot of money very, very quickly is webinars. So yeah. if you can master the crafter, like create and craft very good webinars. You can make a lot of money really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and like Russell Brunson is one of the, I would say one of the best in the world at it. Yeah. So yeah, I would say like, you know, take his perfect webinar course or script or whatever. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Um, like it depends, depends on what you want to learn. Really, like, Anyone for Instagram. Like if you're say, okay. say you're someone who wants to be like pretty much do what you do, do Instagram consulting and teach other people how to do Instagram. Where would you get started now? Oh, with, for me. <laughs> Did you, so, okay. So your site is what your site is. Oh, so, so I like, I have different things. So it's okay. igboss.com or Instagram king.com. Okay. Or crushing Instagram.com, like people can go to any of that. But um, I teach, for example, people obviously how to grow on Instagram, but on yeah. the flip side, how to actually monetize their followings yeah. um, effectively. So, and then also how to build an agency. Because I also have an agency. Um, I've been able to build a multiple six figure agency um, in about a year. Yeah. And obviously, I teach people how to do that as well. 
I had monetized. I've also like done e-commerce services, digital products as well. Yeah. Webinars, obviously, yeah. pushing from Instagram. You name it. I've done it probably all. I freaking sold mini pigs with a client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through freaking Instagram. <laughs> I, I freaking guns nice. now. Like, like there's a lot of stuff I've done on Instagram. So I've, even other languages as well. So I have accounts yeah. in Spanish too. Yeah. Yeah. I know this works whether in English, in Spanish, in Portuguese. I have students in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, so no matter the language, no matter the niche, I know this thing works. I've proven it over and over again. So yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's, I, so I have I have some questions about about the language thing. Before I go there, though, I just want to recap. So you said Instagram King, IG Boss, and what was the other one? CrushingInstagram.com. Okay, and I'm gonna link to those uh, below this video. And I did have some questions about the language thing. So if you are you know bilingual, trilingual, multilingual, whatever you do, what are the you know what, what are some considerations? Is it better to work in specific languages? Are there any advantages to doing that? I've heard a lot of different things. So I just kind of interested in what your take on that is. So, sure so um, obviously the English language, I would say is like the world language. Like most people speak it, like they understand it, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and usually also because English, the United States is one of the biggest consumers. You'll definitely like see a lot more people buying. Having said that, there's a lot more competition as well. So you, you're like, you're, you have a lot more roadblocks in that sense. Now on the flip side, with other languages, the audience is, depending on the niche, obviously, for whatever reason, the audience is extremely engaged. Like it's, it's I would say like five times more engaged than in English. Like I have accounts huh. um, in Spanish that have 170,000 followers, right? Yeah. And, and the, that account is more engaged than an account that I have in 500,000. Like it's, it's like five times more engaged. Like people engage more, they know me more, they yeah. love me. Like there's, there's like a lot more passion. I don't know because like the language or, or I don't know. Like the, at least for me, and what I've seen also like in the Portuguese market is that people are a lot more engaged. Um, they, they, you know, like they engage more with the person. Um, they feel more connected as well. Cause like when they see like, for example, somebody like me, like I speak Spanish in Instagram stories on that account. Right. They say, Oh my God, this, this guy's in Spanish. Uh, I speak Spanish. He's like talking to me. Like it's more relatable English. Sometimes uh, many times it feels like you're trying to like reach a very large audience, which is great but sometimes it's not very relatable to people. Yeah. Um, in other languages, like you become very, very personal, very relatable because most of the time, like for example, Spanish, mainly spoken in South America, Central America, Spain, stuff like that. French is only spoken in France, in, yeah. in, in France and uh, like Quebec in Canada, yeah. uh, I think. Uh, Portuguese, only spoken in Portugal and Brazil, only. So you have an audience that's literally like super target specific, like it's huge though, but people feel very connected with you because they know that you're from there and stuff like that. So, um, or you're talking to them specifically. So that's why I feel that like you have a very engaged audience in other languages, but they probably don't spend as much money as the English market, but you have more volume. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's yeah. Of, so I've, I've heard, I've heard the problem with the conversions because you know, certain non-English speaking markets, there are some that definitely have lower conversions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get as many buyers. I've heard that. What I'm kind of curious about based on what you mentioned is, is there any way that you can build up an audience in another language and like leverage that to get, you know, maybe some help from influencers in the U S be like, look, I have this many followers in this, this market. Like, does that work for anyone? Have you ever seen that work? Oh yeah. Yeah. 100%. So for example, uh, I'm with Gary V, right? I've worked yeah. with Gary V before. Uh, was also, I was in, uh, oh, do. actually, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, actually, I mean, actually, in uh, influencer party several months ago with him in yeah. Boise, yeah. Um, and one of the questions I asked him, "Hey, what are you doing in other languages?" I mean, I'm diving really, really hard in other languages in China, in Spanish. He said, in Portuguese. Um, so he's diving really, really hard. So, if for example, somebody's watching and you have you speak Spanish, and you have an audience there. Like for example, me, I have a huge audience in Spanish. I have a, like a three hundred thousand uh, Facebook group. Uh, couple hundred thousand on Instagram, probably like a couple million uh, combined network. Um, like I can reach out to uh, Gary Vee and say, Hey, I have this uh, audience in Spanish. Like, can we work together? Right. Uh, more than likely he's going to say yes, because he actually wants to reach that audience as well. So you can definitely leverage it if you position it right. Like all comes down to how you sell really. Wow. That is, that's, uh, that's intense. So this was, this was Gary Vee saying that he was doing a deep dive in other markets, including China. Yeah. So it's, it's like, uh, he's like, uh, I think it was China, Malaysia, uh, Portuguese and Spanish. Like I asked him personally, like with a mic, like one-on-one -on -one, yeah. um, in Boise, Idaho a couple months ago. 
And he said, yes, like he's diving really, really hard because like he's seeing a huge potential market. There's literally no competition, like zero, mm -hmm. um, virtually almost. So like, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to put more, more focus. Like he said that he's transcribing, translating everything he does into other languages. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So maybe we'll have to link to language courses instead of Instagram course. I don't know. Uh, okay. So the next one I was going to ask you actually is related to that. So there's all these different channels you can use. You know, we've, we've mentioned a couple, what are the most underutilized channels by marketers in your opinion? It can be different platforms. It can be, you know, any, any channels that marketers are underutilized. What would your opinion? Yeah. Right now I feel like Facebook is overutilized. <laughs> Everybody's on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. But like Instagram, I would say Instagram and YouTube are the two underutilized ones. And there's a reason why they're my main focus right yeah. now. So for example, Instagram is definitely underutilized. And I don't see enough ads on Instagram. I don't see enough Instagram story ads. I don't see people growing Instagram pages um, and monetizing them effectively. Um, I can guarantee you like probably, I don't know, 90% of every single multi, like over a million follower page is ran by a 18 year old kid or 15 year old kid that's in high school. Um, so like right now, like the big pages on Instagram, they're ran by kids which means that the influencer marketing is very cheap. Um, but the actual marketers and the money is not on Instagram yet because like they don't know how the platform works and understand it. They think, Oh, it's just about posting booty pictures. Um, <laughs> um, it, which is not. So Instagram is definitely a platform that's being underutilized. And right now I see a huge trend in all the, a lot of entrepreneurs and marketers and stuff like that. That's shifting towards Instagram. Probably like in the last month I've closed more deals than probably, I don't know, like in my past six months. Oh wow! This last month alone, yeah. I've closed more deals just with entrepreneurs and marketers than the previous six months. Yeah. So it is because they they they're seeing okay. Everybody is trying to learn Facebook ads. I already know Facebook ads, so I'm going to shift to the new one, um, which is Instagram right now. Mm. So I will say like Instagram, it's the number one platform right now. It's the hottest one as well um, to be on, and it, I don't know how how long that that will be. You know, like because you know platform change changes and it, that's they grow and blow up then Zuckerberg wants more money <laughs> um, and they screw you over. But right now um, is, it's, uh, is the place to be. And if you start building your digital real estate, um, then later on, like you'll be set. You know, the, the, the Facebook pages that started back in 2009, they still get freaking insane amount of organic reach and they still are able to make a lot of money with, their, with those pages because it started early. So yeah. if people start right now growing, um, they'll be set for life basically. That's a long time. Uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That is super interesting. So this might be, I know you can't give a solid answer for this, but say I'm, you know, someone who's you know pretty disciplined, hardworking. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with Instagram, but I'm willing to take, you know, six months and learn it or three months, whatever, long enough to get into it. What kind of deals can you close as a new Instagram marketer if you're working with you know, small to medium sized businesses? What's realistic for someone if they say, hey, I'm gonna work this yeah. for six months and then try to close clients? Oh yeah, like, like that's, that's the easiest, like the agency model is the easiest thing ever. Cause like, yeah. first of all, businesses don't know what you're doing on Instagram. Yeah. So like, yeah. you can literally pitch them almost anything. Like I have, uh, bring out Twookie again. He closed, I think in two weeks after starting the course, he was like making 3,500 bucks a month. Like without oh, wow. any previous, like, yeah, like he didn't know anything and he, he was making 3,500 bucks a month. Um, there's a strategy in the course itself that you basically get free leads without having clients risk their money. Um, what course is this? Like my, my course, like IG boss, Instagram course. Like, oh, you have a course. Yeah. yeah Perfect. So, like, That's what we've been looking for. Yeah, okay. Yeah. IG boss course. So two weeks, $3,500 a month deal. Okay. Please. Yeah. And like, for example, like, like I charge, for example, um, a lot more than that, but like, Depending on the client, you can start with 500 bucks a month, a thousand bucks a month, um, 2000 bucks a month. And it's pretty easy to scale up. Once you have a system in place, um, in terms of like growing, posting, all that stuff, it becomes pretty freaking simple and you don't have to spend like hours and hours a day on Instagram. Um, and you can charge money for it. You just blow their audience up and they get, they get free leads, they get free clients. Um, it's a win-win for everybody and it's easy money as well. Like lo the logos hanging fruit is uh, client work. Really. Yeah. 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 And then you'll have that, you know, that, that piece in your portfolio to point to exactly. you know, for the next mm -hmm. one. So, uh, so how much time you have, by the way, I want to make sure I'm not going over on your time. Here. No, I'm good. I'm good. The, the reason like what they're knocking is freaking they're, they're working construction outside or something. I don't even know. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, so you mentioned that you actually worked with a couple, I think it was Spanish speaking celebrities, but how did you get those kind of contacts? What would you suggest people that don't have any network do to get those kind of contacts? Any, any yeah. advice you can lend here? So first off, when you have an audience, people reach out to you like naturally, yeah. like this is how it is. Like mm-hmm. that's just the name of the game. Like when you have a big audience, people notice and people reach out. That's just how it is. So like if you can grow an audience, for example, I worked with Ronaldinho, um, <laughs> like the soccer player. Um, yeah, like reason, <laughs> yeah, like the reason why I did it, I don't have a contact with him at all. Yeah. Like his agent just reached out to me and say, hey, um, I'm a, a Ronaldinho agent. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. like when I tell, I'm like, you're right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, then, and then he's like, nah, for real. And I'm like, okay, prove it. And Ronaldinho just followed me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I believe you. Now. And, okay, and then, yeah. like, we, we worked on a promotion for his app. Um, and then I actually, like, later on, I met Ronaldinho in person uh, in Miami. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And live in the club. It was freaking awesome. Yeah. So um, that was one of them uh, that reached out to me, like, directly just because I had an audience. But uh, all the connections I have, like I've worked with uh, a lot of high-end entrepreneurs like Gary Vee, Ty Lopez, Russell Brunson, Alex Becker, Dan Henry, Rachel Peterson. I can name a lot of people. Um, and the only reason is because like I always, my approach has always been over delivering on value up front without expecting anything in return. Yep. Um, and just people just retell and just like, uh, they, seem, they see that you're genuine, that you actually care, that you actually know what you're talking about, that you actually can provide value and you don't care about the money. Yeah. Uh, obviously you care about the money, but you don't care as much about the money. You care more about the relationship with the person. Yeah. Um, and then they see that and they just, you know, reach out and just decide to work with you. That's basically, uh, it. That's so <laughs> no crazy. sales pitch. It's yeah. just over delivering value and people will just take out their money, like their money and just give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it's working, man. I mean, one-on-one question with Gary V and then, uh, Ronaldinho and club live. Those are some pretty yeah. peak experiences. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's wild. Um, let's see. So I saw actually one of your videos where you went into, so you went into an update in Instagram where you could use polls and somehow use that for, I guess, intelligence for your Shopify stores. So that's pretty interesting. I'm kind of interested where you got that information. Would you just follow blogs that have to do with Instagram marketing where you got that update? Do you follow the actual companies, companies blogs to find out what new features they're putting out or how did you get that info? So basically, it. yeah. So uh, Instagram usually releases a blog or an update every single time they do something. Mm-hmm. And uh, since I'm on Instagram all the time, and I have a, also a huge network and team uh, that's on Instagram, like I get news pretty freaking quickly. Um, but regarding any Instagram update and stuff like that. But um, the poll stuff, like for example, the, the reason why I came up with the idea um, to use polls in order to sell or to use Shopify or whatever it was, yeah, is because like it's all about sales. Like at the end of the day, if you if you break it down it all comes down to like, everybody has been selling since forever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it all comes down to actually how you pre-frame your offer. So polls allow you to pre-frame your offer before you do a selling or do a call to action or whatever. So for example, uh, I'm doing this, let's say I'm doing a story right now about how to lose weight. So I'll just provide value to three tips on how to lose weight. Then I'll say something along the lines like, hey, would you like to find out more about how you can lose weight right now? And 10 extra simple tips that you can implement right away. Put a yes or no. 90% of the people will say yes, they're going to watch yeah. them to that point because like you yeah. already qualified them to watch them to that point because you gave three tips on how to freaking lose weight. Yeah. Um, people are not going to watch yeah. if they're not interested. And yeah. then the next one you say, awesome. So everybody who voted yes, uh, just swipe up uh, to go to this landing page or just swipe up, DM me, uh, weight loss if you want to get this program. Um, and then let's say, for example, you don't get nobody swiping up and DMing you. You can actually check the people who voted yes and say, hey, I just saw that you voted yes on the poll that you wanted to learn more about a weight loss, uh, let me know how I can help and serve you. Boom. Yeah. That's yeah. it. DM uh, through DMs and like the, you start a conversation with a person. It's a lot more personal. Um, and obviously like as you grow, this does not become like scalable, but you can like make a lot of money with this. Like I yeah. have students, like I actually just did a workshop um, inside the course where we took uh, one person in the fitness industry actually yeah. uh, in the weight loss space, selling high ticket coaching um, and build a six figure business in three to four months through Instagram DMs with a small. <laughs> so okay. it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's possible. So it all comes out like, Hey, are you willing to put in the work? Like, yeah. you, first off, do you like money? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> are you actually willing to work for it? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. That's where the people, <laughs> that's where yeah, people the second are. one will get some people, uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for your, uh, so you, you basically got this off the Instagram, just their, their press release, their blog. And then you just started testing on your own after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that more marketers don't follow platform changes more closely. Uh, I feel like there's a big disconnect there between the tech industry and the marketing industry. So I, I think it's pretty cool that you're, you know, keep, keeping up to date as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I try to, like, I need to, in order to stay ahead of the competition. Um, and, but, like, the thing with, like, bloggers and, like, the thing with me reading blogs is that there's all these bloggers that are butthurt about the algorithm changes, and the reality is that they just don't know how to freaking grow. Like, this is, this is the, the fact that they don't know how to growth hack. They complain about the algorithm changes, and they complain about this, and, like, hey, nobody cares about you complaining. It's gonna, it's gonna change anyways. Yeah, yeah. So you might as well just figure it out. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no option. Uh, definitely no option. So let's see, I have just two more questions for you. So, uh, yeah, we talked about, you know, we got into your background we talked about specific tactics quite a bit. What's like, what are some just, you know, the, the key principles to entrepreneurship, life, relationship building that have really carried your business the most like that you would want to get out to people if they're thinking about doing anything, you know, entrepreneurial. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing I would say is, uh, relationships matter. So like relationship is the number one is the name of the game. If you're not able to build relationship with people, you're going to lose every single time. Um, um, no matter how like handsome or beautiful or whatever that you think you are, you're going to lose. Um, if you're a jerk, you're like actually not, not a jerk in terms of polarizing like Trump, but actually like a major <laughs> jerk, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to lose. So, um, relationships matter. Your network is your net worth 100%. Like I've seen this more than ever right now. Um, and also not like working smarter as well. Like one of the things, for example, that um, took me freaking four years to figure it out was simply modeling success, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it took me four, four freaking years of trial and error, being broke, not having success. Um, and it was all because I wasn't modeling success. I was trying to do it my own way. My thought train of thought was like, hey, if that guy's doing it that way, I can then do it this way and it will work. Hey, guess what? No, <laughs> no, Sherlock. Uh, it doesn't. So, um, yeah. like, just model success, work smarter. If you cannot figure things out, just buy a course, get a mentor, whatever. Your, your learning curve would like shorten. Like the only resource people don't have, like that's not renewable is time. Like yeah. money, people like if you have a job, like money replenishes every two weeks. Um, you know, get, you get paid every two weeks or every month. Um, so like the only thing you don't have is time. So if you can like shorten the time by instead of four years to a few months or a few weeks, like why wouldn't you, you know, like you're going to have success a lot quicker. I wish, I wish I would have taken that, that freaking loan sooner. Yeah. <laughs> like back when I freaking started, um, I wish I started working smarter rather than harder, um, because I would have success a lot quicker, you know? Yeah. So that's, that was say like the number one thing, um, as well. And so relationships work smarter. And then I would say the third thing is stop, um, complaining. Uh, like that's one of the, like, I just, <laughs> it's a great piece of advice. Like, like it freaking pisses me off. Like I come from a country that freaking light goes out and water goes out. Like, yeah, yeah. what would you do? Like, <laughs> like my question to you, like yeah. if you have an online business and light goes out, what do you do? Nothing. Yeah. Right. In the United States, freaking light doesn't go out. Water doesn't go out. So yeah. like freaking, like you have all the freaking resources. And even if you come from a poor third world country like me, yeah. I was able to do it. So you can too. Like the internet has leveled the playing field for everybody. Everybody has the same opportunity. Yeah. Uh, uh, entrepreneurship online has never been easier. Like it's the easiest thing right now to do. Like freaking building a brick and mortar business is hard. They yeah. need freaking investment you need. Uh, inventory you need over like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it yeah. why would you just build an online business you can run from your phone while building bed like i i stay in bed like <laughs> times that i can count and just yeah. work from you know so like why wouldn't you um so those three things relationship building work smarter and stop complaining just do the just do the work <laughs> i like it just do the work uh perfect okay well it's the end of my main questions is there anything that i didn't ask you that i should have I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's cool. I think that's uh, three pieces of info are a great, are a great way to end. Um, uh, Josue, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, your time is super valuable. So, uh, you know, helping people off free like this uh, is amazing. Thank you so much. And that's IG Boss is the course. Uh, is there anywhere else people can find you online you want people to go to see your material or that they can learn stuff for free if they don't have the whatever it is for IG Boss yeah. right now? Yeah. So yeah, like they can actually just go on YouTube, uh, online CEOs, um, they can just go there. I'm going to be putting a lot of content into it and a lot of focus. So they can just go there. There's free training there. I have a free group as well. They can just go on YouTube and find it there as well. I have a free group. I can do live streams, training calls. Like I have a lot of stuff for free just as a way to over deliver and then guilt people into paying me. That's my whole strategy. <laughs> if you want to call it that. But, uh, basically like, I like it. the reason, the reason why I do this is because like when I started, I didn't have 
somebody, like I didn't have the resources. Like I didn't have yeah. anybody teaching for free. Right. Yeah. So I know, I know the struggle of, Hey, I don't have money. I don't have, you know, I want to learn. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I don't have the money to do it. I get that. Right. And I, back then there wasn't a freaking YouTube channel talking about Instagram. There wasn't a freaking Facebook group uh, where the host did freaking live trainings for free. There wasn't a free, you know, webinar or whatever. Right. There wasn't any of that. Yeah. Uh, I just had to figure it, take a loan, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. So there, that's the reason why I put so much content for free as, as well there. And then obviously for the people who want to take it seriously, take it a step further and just see results a lot quicker, then obviously the, the paid information is there as well. So yeah. they get both. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm going to go ahead. Thank you for coming on. I'm going to cut this recording and then we can chat after. So thank you again. Cool.